This is Modern Refugee. I have had a ton of questions on cast iron over the years and just recently as well, so I decided I'm going to do a video here on my cast iron. I've got several pieces of cast iron cookware. These are kind of my big five right here that I use the most. I also have some smaller skillets and I have uh, another pan that has kind of the grill grates on the bottom of it if you're frying steak or whatnot. But these are kind of my main ones. And I was going to kind of walk you through the different aspects of these and whatnot. The big thing with cast iron that people have an issue with is how the whole seasoning process works. And I keep it real simple. Um, I warm up the, uh, I wash the uh, pans, I warm them up on the stove, I put a little bit of oil on them, and then if they really need a, a bigger drink of oil, so to speak, I'll put them into the oven. I see a lot of guys on YouTube, they'll put their cast iron in the oven like 350 degrees. I don't do that. I keep it about 250 degrees or actually lower when I'm seasoning my stuff. I don't like the real high heat. I find if you put oil in these cast iron pans and if uh, it gets too hot, they're going to get they're gonna gum up. That oil is going to gum up. Now, I just use regular old olive oil when I'm uh, seasoning my pans. Um, another question I get a lot is, you know, where to get good cast iron. Well, actually, the best place to get cast iron is at garage sales. The older the stuff is, the better it is, in my opinion. <clears throat> now, if I got to buy a brand name one now, it's going to probably be Lodge. But if you look at the cast iron now compared to the older stuff, the big thing is, is I don't know if you can see on there, you can see that's just as smooth as glass. That's kind of your best cast iron when it's real smooth on the bottom like that. You look at new cast iron today, it's going to be rough. And the rougher it is, I don't care for that real rough cast iron. It doesn't, um, it's harder to make it nonstick. It's okay for like deep frying stuff where you got two inches of oil in there. But other than that, I just kind of don't care for that real rough cast iron. Um, and like I said, all these right here, these pans and stuff that I have, <clears throat> these are all perfectly smooth inside as you can see there now a little bit about Dutch ovens I've got a couple different Dutch ovens um, if I could only have one Dutch oven it would be one without legs on it and the reason for that is is I can use it in on the regular stove I can put it in the oven I can make pot roasts in it but I can still take it out put it on a grate for my fire pit I can still set it in my wood stove um, I can turn it if I'm frying like brown and meat in it if I'm going to braise something or making something like paprika or or if I make a brown on a roast if I want to brown a pork roast or if I want to simmer some pork to make some barbecued pork I'm going to be able to use all this and if I only have two pieces of cast iron these are the two I would want I would want a 12 inch skillet that's perfectly seasoned and I'd want a Dutch oven with no legs on it. Now one thing I'm going to mention, if you're using your cast iron out on an open fire, and I use a lot of my cast iron out on open fire, they're going to get sooty. There's kind of no way around it. So when you're carrying them or you're bringing your food in the house after you cooked or whatever, just always keep that in mind that they're going to have a sooty layer on it. Now, there's different ways. You can rub maybe a little soap on it, but then that's going to smell when you cook, or you can rub a little oil on the outside, but that's typically what I'll do. When I'm done washing my uh, pans and putting them up, I will rub just a little bit of oil on the outside as well as on the inside and that kind of keeps the soot down I can just wipe the soot down now another question is is there's different ways to clean these you can clean them with salt you can just wipe them out there's different things if I was out camping I would just wipe them out I wouldn't kind of worry so much about getting them spotlessly clean um, here in the house I'll lightly clean them with just some light water some light detergent um, but I don't uh, you know I don't scrub them with like iron uh, steel scrubby or anything like that it's just always with a sponge just real light soap and water and then just as soon as i'm done i'm going to set them on the stove i'm going to turn the stove on and i'm going to 
so the uh, water evaporates out of them. And when the water is evaporated out of them and the cast iron is warm, not hot, just good and warm, I'm going to put a drop or two of oil in the pan and I'm going to wipe the pan down inside and out. That's going to give me my nice coating like this that I have on here and I'm not going to have to worry about uh, any rust or anything coming out like this. And this is going to be good to go for the next time I use it. And that's kind of basically how I clean my cast iron but like i said if i was out at an extended period out outside i wouldn't probably clean them as much as i do just because i'm putting them up here in the cupboards and whatnot but that's kind of how my cleaning procedure goes um go over like my big five here i got my 12 inch skillet this is kind of my main one i've got my uh i think this is a number 12 size dutch oven without legs on it i got a number 10 inch skillet here I've got a uh, griddle. Now, uh, griddles aren't 100% necessary. You can do the same stuff in a pan, but I kind of like the griddle if I want to make uh, tortillas or if I want to make uh, pancakes outside. It's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do outside on the open fire, and that's kind of why I like the skillet and other things like grilled cheeses or something like that. That's kind of why I like my uh, griddle. Um, and then the last thing here is this big guy. This is the number 12 Lodge cast iron with legs now i've used this a bunch of different ways you can kind of hang it from a chain on a tripod you can actually set it down in your fire with the legs now what i did with my fire pit is i've got some smooth pieces of rock left over from making my countertop here that i actually took those smooth pieces of granite and i took a couple of them chunks that weren't very big maybe about the size of a softball and i put those down in the bottom of my fire pit and i also put some in the bottom of my wood stove so if i gotta set this with the legs in either my wood stove or out in my uh fire pit i can do that and it's not going to sink down into the ashes or whatnot underneath um i like this lid on here part of the reason why i ended up buying one of these is I use this lid in conjunction with my 12 inch skillet and I'll see if I can show you here here's my skillet this lid off here fits perfectly on top of this skillet now I can take this skillet and I can I'll move this stuff out of here so you can get a better look at it I can take this skillet I can put cornbread in it I can put biscuits in it and now I can take this outside I can throw a uh, I can throw my wood coals on top of this here and this is going to bake a lot quicker than it would if it's in one of these Dutch ovens because there's just less air air space in here to heat up plus the heat's going to be closer to the the biscuits and for biscuits and cornbread this is the bomb it works really really good I have no issues with it it'll brown the top of the biscuits and stuff very nicely and that's kind of why I like using this another thing with these uh, lids this lid right here can actually be inverted and this can either be set on a on a grill grate over a fire pit or it can be just even set on the hot coals you can actually use this as a, as a griddle in itself you can cook uh, you can cook pancakes or tortilla warm tortillas on this probably even cook eggs on it if you wanted to as long as there wasn't too much because there's it's got kind of a, a bevel that goes to the inside so if you put an egg or something in the center here it's gonna want to go down to the bottom because the bottom of this is a little bit lower than the outside edges of it but that's kind of one of the reasons why I, why I wanted a Dutch oven like that is because I wanted this lid this lid is worth just as much or more than the oven by itself but uh, all very useful I've used all of these for just about any kind of dish you can think of over the years um, I like cooking outside and that's another reason I got uh, got all this cast iron um and like I said, with the exception of the one with the legs on it, I can use all of these inside on a regular electric or gas stove too. Use it out on the side burner for the grill. I can use it for all that stuff. Um, another thing, it's kind of like a, a prepper thing too with the uh, cast iron. Even if there's no power, I can still cook a fairly decent meal with these pieces of uh, cast iron I got right here. I can, you know, I can braise a roast. I can. You know, I can make a casserole, I can make a dessert, I can make fried potatoes. I already did fried potatoes and steak and sausage and biscuit gravy on previous previous videos that I've showed you guys already. This stuff is pretty, pretty versatile. I use it for, like I said, I use it for just about everything. Um, so if you get a chance, check your garage sales, check your uh, 
Goodwill store or whatnot, look for older cast iron. Older cast iron is the bomb. Um, but if you can't find older cast iron, Lodge is good. Like I said, I don't really have any problems with the Lodge stuff. I kind of stay away from the Walmart brand. It, the, that cast iron is just thin and it's really rough. I just don't care for it. Um, there's other brands like the brand on the back of this right here. It says Wagner on it. I'm sure Wag. I'm, I'm not aware of Wagner being a uh, even in existence anymore. But uh, a lot of these pans, like this one right here, a lot of these pans don't even have any markings on the bottom of them. You know, this one says kidney, kidney, Sydney. I think it says Sydney on it. I don't know the S. S is, if it's an S, it's kind of kind of messed up. Anyway, because uh, this is old. You know, I just. Uh, like I said, the older stuff is kind of the better stuff in my opinion, and there is there is a lot of uh, cast iron out there. So if you get a chance, check uh, check garage shells or whatnot, and try to keep a piece or two of cast iron around. Like I said, there's a lot of different uses for it. You can use it if the power's out. You can uh, use it on an open fire. You can use it out camping. They're just very very versatile. So if you get a chance, check out some cast iron. Everybody should have some, at least in my opinion. So anyway, this is Modern Refugee. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed my talk here on my cast iron. I hope you guys have a great night.